Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how to achieve the hair, the skin tones, be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing it down so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. This is where we left it in part one. So basically what I did there was using the Caran d'Ache pencil rich colour that is a similar colour to what I'm looking at and then using the white to get the texture and then going over then with like a burnt sea in a ultramarine blue and a yellow ochre so just to recap on part one I will be covering this in more detail once I start doing the body of Anthony Joshua For the hair, I tend to mark in the area with white uh, to get the structure of where the hairs go and then glaze over them with the colours that's needed. Usually it's like a burnt umber with an ultramarine blue. And then the subtleties then you can add on the top later. Before I continued with the face, I decided to do the background, so it gives me some idea of what needs to be done. It regards value in the face, the values. So, um, yeah, so basically what I do here is mark it with a piece of paper. It makes it a lot easier than trying to use a ruler. So mark where roughly where you want, and then you can just go along the side edge or the top edge and mark your area and then just use a ruler then if, you do, if you're doing straight lines like this. Now the background was achieved by actually putting that Union Jack behind him using Photoshop and what I did I put a lens flare just to the top side of him so it created a nice light that seems to fall on the side of his face because on the original reference image there's actually some bright panel behind him uh, but I, obviously I didn't want to use that I wanted something more interesting but it, it created the same atmosphere so using that lens flare really helped Here's some footage now just uh, showing you the beads of sweat and how I achieved that. It's a case of putting the white down, going over with blue, but your burnt sienna and your yellow ochre, and using that rich colour of the Caran d'Ache as well, mixing together with the burnt sienna. And then to dull it down, you can use a little bit of blue if it's needed, or to lift it up, just use the white. Um, it's a case of going from one to the other really uh, and eventually it comes together. So when you actually put the burnt sienna on the flesh tone it could be a little bit rich so to actually dull that down you use the complementary colour which is blue. If you're getting value in this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now the details in the eyes on the reference image was lost in shadow so you haven't got to really get uptight about that and you know worry that you can't see the detail just keep loose and just draw what you see and feel it rather than thinking about what needs to be done. The great thing about the human eye it will actually fill in the gaps so even though there's no detail there you imagine the details there so 
don't worry about it if you can't see detail just keep relaxed focus on the energy and draw that rather than the detail Now I'm going through this procedure now, so the underdrawing, these are the colours I use for the underdrawing. I've replaced the cadmium red with a burnt sienna, so that's acting as the red, and then there's yellow ochre for the yellow, and then ultramarine for the blue. And then this is actually mixed on the board, so you're mixing it like you would primary colours to get the shade you want. So it's a good practice to do just to get used to mixing colours, but I use the same colours when I glaze over the top of the rich colours which I'll be doing in the next stage. Here's a quick clip just showing you how I'm lining up the actual Union Jack there so sometimes you have to do that to get the ruler out and just check the alignment to make sure everything's okay. And here's the rich colours I'm using for the second coat. Now I'm going to place a list of colours, each individual colours I use in the description below so you can buy them as a single pencil or if you can afford the full set I'd recommend that because the colours really come in handy for the backgrounds and clothes so if you can afford the full set I would recommend it, I mean birthday present or Christmas present. I've placed all the links at the side of them so be sure to check that out at the end of the video. Now with the second coat, with your rich colours, you'll find that the colours are not always exactly what you're wanting. So you have to sort of subtle those down, and the way I do it is to use the complementary colour. So when you put a colour down and it's too vibrant and too rich, you use a complementary colour. So say if it's going towards the orange colour, I'd use a blue. If the colour's going towards a red, I use a green. If it's going towards a yellow, I use a purple. So it's a case of getting a colour pencil down that is very similar to what you're looking for and then subtle that over the top by using your primaries and your secondaries. So it's just a case of doing that and swinging from one to the other. Now, the best not to get tunnel vision and just work on one area and forget about the rest. You have to keep open. So you open your heart, send your heart to your, the image and then the energy will come back. Because in these areas of the body, there's still the sense of his personality, his energy, the power. So you're trying to portray that. So it's not just a matter of putting detail down, it's a matter of getting the feeling right. And my approach to that is to keep open and not be too fixated on one point and feel the energy, feel. And there's a, a quite a little bit of a tip here. It might sound a little strange, but instead of tunnel vision looking through the eyes, sense that you're looking from behind the eyes and what that does it opens up your vision to peripheral vision and you start to see see more and feel more so there's a little tip there because uh, I used to do Tai Chi for many years I still practice it every day but there's a point at back of the neck which is called the Jade Gate now this opens up all the sensitivity and it really does help to see the subtleties and feeling. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as that would help the channel to grow. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you.
Now this part of the drawings were very shimmery and it's like a purpley shimmer to it. So I had to introduce another colour which was the Elysium Crimson Red, which makes great purples when you mix with ultramarine blue. So you really got to keep open to try and different things until you get the right feel. So I used the rich colours underneath and then glazed over very very lightly with the ultramarine and the Elysium Crimson and then using lemon yellow as well in the mix just to get that subtlety and the feel correct. Now just relax with all this detail in the skin as well just allow it just to happen let the hand move where it needs to go um, don't try and put every little mark exactly the same as a reference it'll just tighten up the drawing it's a case of getting a feel for what it feels like uh, and just let it happen really and that's this really works when you let go of the mind because the mind will try and control the movement it wants to control things so if you just let go and open your heart it's all about energy and feeling and that's the way to go i feel anyway now with my art is just to let things happen and just observe it happening and don't get in the way just keep out of the way um, and then you'll you'll find that it just happens the movements just happen and the texture just happens it's a strange feeling but once you you know you sense this you'll know what I mean it's just a case of letting go of control the mind likes to control and that what causes tension and stress so really it's all about enjoying it in the moment and not have any expectations and any memories of what you've done before and then that'll keep you calm and in the right frame of mind. Now parts of the reference image are really intense light. Now to get that really intense white I use the Rembrandt sticks. They are really rich in pigments so they really do stand out. Now there's a way of using this as well is when you, you have to tap on the little on the board just to try and find where that edge is on the pastel stick and then move it to what direction you want but then what I do then is glaze over the top and now this stuff really clings to the pastel mat the Rembrandt stinks so it makes it easy to glaze over the top the mark doesn't move at all underneath when you glaze over the top I could recommend buying some Rembrandt sticks again I'll leave a list of uh, materials in the description below just to mention as well that this uh, portrait will be on my Patreon page. Um, I've, I've done part of this real-time footage and real-time audio, so you can follow along with me, about an hour and a half long, and that will be coming out shortly on my Patreon page, so check that out in the description below. Right, so towards the end of the painting you look at the whole thing and see what needs to be done so I saw that the lips needed some work so I, I did that and a few other areas so it's a case of getting the balance of the whole image so on the last areas you just check open your heart to just check how it feels and then something will stand out that don't feel correct or it's not in balance so it's a case of just opening up and just seeing how the actual picture looks as a whole. Right, here's the portrait at the correct angles, I saw it. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it, it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message. In the comments below uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce 
I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on and to subscribe click on the circle here it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos thank you so much take care and be well